Is anyone craving beluga meat? It's raw, of course. Anyone have an inkling for ring seal liver or tic char? Foods like this may seem unusual to us, but traditional foods are an integral part of Inuit culture and identity. Traditional foods are extremely nutritious. However, they are also the major route of exposure to many environmental contaminants, such as mercury. Mercury is a well-known toxin that has many adverse effects on the body, the most noted and studied of which are on the brain. Because of their traditional diets, Inuit individuals have blood mercury concentrations that are 13 times greater than the general Canadian population. And three out of four pregnant Inuit women have blood mercury concentrations that exceed the Health Canada guideline. Because of this, consumption advisories often recommend decreasing intake of traditional foods that have high mercury levels. However, these consumption advisories have limitations. One of the limitations being they're based on the external dose. They are based on the amount of mercury present within the traditional food. Now this is not reflective of the internal dose or the amount of mercury present within the blood that eventually reaches the biological target tissue. For example, mercury getting to the brain. Now, to bridge this gap between external and internal dose, we have bioaccessibility. Bioaccessibility can be defined as the amount of contaminant that leaches from the traditional food into the inside of the gut and is available for absorption into the bloodstream. My project is looking at mercury bioaccessibility in traditional foods collected from a large Inuit community, as well as the bioaccessibility of an essential micronutrient called selenium. Now, why did I mention selenium? I'm glad you asked. Studies have shown that dietary selenium can not only mitigate, but in some cases even reverse mercury toxicity. It does this by binding to mercury, creating an insoluble complex that will eventually be excreted from the body. Using an experimental model to look at the bioaccessibility allows us to compare these traditional foods based on these internal doses and make special note of foods that have enough bioaccessible selenium to perhaps mitigate mercury toxicity. This will allow us to create more accurate consumption advisories which will help promote the consumption of traditional foods, encourage Inuit culture and, and identity, as well as uh, without sacrificing Inuit health. Thank you.